Hello everybody and welcome to the Sound Test Room US. Today we're going to be taking a look at Workbench, uh, one of my all-time favorite apps for iOS. One of the first apps I ever got for myself after GarageBand uh, when I first started getting into this, this madness. And it's a video that Doug gets requested to do uh, quite a bit, so we both thought it'd be fun if I took a, a stab at a nice long walkthrough here. I just deleted it from my iPad and reinstalled it, so it's as fresh as can be. Uh, it opens up here into this nice getting started screen, kind of goes over most of the, uh, you know, all of the main functionality. And there's an online manual for some more in-depth kind of stuff. And there's this video as well. <laughs> so uh, when we hit play here, we can kind of see what, what it is. It's essentially a 16-step sequencer on eight different banks. And we have two going on at the same time right now. And we can chain them together to make a single 32-step sequence if we want. And we can also chain them all together and have up to 128 steps. So you can kind of see it's moving through and now we're now we're back over here. So uh so you can really get some very long chains going um you know really sample, you know, one little bit and move it across all of these steps and uh and really have a lot of fun just with a with a single hit. So let's kind of show you how to get started here. So these main uh functions up here are what you're going to be using uh, for recording and getting your, your samples where you want them to be. So let's just use the iPad mic for a second and we'll turn our threshold way up. This is, you know, however low the, the threshold is, it'll record at a lower volume. So this would definitely record my voice right now. If it was all the way up, it might not record my voice, but it would record, you know, a nice loud hand clap once I gave it. So let's add that there. And now we can kind of hear hear what we got going on. So that's how to sample. Now we can go to, uh, you know, mute while sampling and still be able to hear it all at the same time. Otherwise, once we have mute while sampling, when we turn on our ability to sample it, uh, this way, you know, it waits for this way, you know, it waits for something like just like that. Whereas, you know, if you're using audio bus or something, you know, you can definitely just turn that off and not worry about it and make it more of a live performance. But this has a nice little uh, mute button there so that you can get all of your hits in cleanly, you know, even while it's still playing. So now that we have a, a hand clap there that we like, let's go to mute and copy. And let's just copy it right on top of that, that voice uh, sample there. And we can drag these all around and just kind of have fun with it, you know, just like this. Uh, see what we like. We can mute them, you know, just turn them off by tapping on them. And, uh, and yeah, we can also trigger them, you know, just by hand there. And, uh, and we can overdub on top of them. Woo! 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 You know, and some of the most fun I've ever had with Workbench is just goofing off and uh, making stupid noises like that into the microphone. And then playing with the fancy controls and you can, you know, we, I'll get into it in a minute, but we can adjust our envelopes and, uh, and just really manipulate our sounds in, in some pretty crazy ways. So that's for our main, our main functionality up here. Uh, we can also export this once we're done. Uh, free record just means, you know, like a live, a live performance there as long as you make it. Otherwise we can just record a single bar, two bars, and it'll just run through whatever length we set all the way up to 32. So let's, uh, do two bars here. And it just records on its own. And now that we've exported this, we have our options to uh, uh, iTunes file sharing, audio copy, or email it to ourselves. So let's go ahead and uh, just do iTunes file sharing there. And uh, I'll get back to, to that in a, in a bit why. But now, so that's, you know, that's essentially how we can and use these four controls for most of the things that we want to do with it, you know. So the fancy controls here are where we get to start having a lot of fun with it. So let's go ahead and clear this loop. And uh, it just does it one at a time. There's no global, global clear. So you'll have to, you know, pick which bank you wanna, wanna um, get rid of there. And just below that, we have a folder here. So we could save this full set. And then this way, we have a blank slate to return to every single time. So when you first get this app, I would definitely recommend just saving a blank set and this way you have a, a nice clean uh, set to load, whereas otherwise it's just going to, we can go to load loop here and see our, our set right there. And um, otherwise it just kind of, it has an auto memory and it just opens up your last project. And so if you want to start something new with it, you got to clear all these loops and 
You know, so just saving a blank canvas is the way to go. So let's uh, let's shut her down and open up Audio Bus. And I've got a little preset with uh, Thumb Jam going here. And uh, let's open up Thumb Jam. And uh, it looks like I just have my drums loaded right now. We're, I have a couple of other instruments in there too, I know. And let's open up Workbench right away. And uh, let's see. Let's pop right back over to Workbench and, and let it know that we're ready. And let's turn down our threshold right away. Once you're inside an audio bus, there's no outside audio signal to worry about. You can turn your threshold down all of the way. Otherwise, it defaults to that, that higher one, and it won't pick up. So you're going to gonna need to set that lower. So let's hit play. Well, actually, let's, uh, let's get some kicks on this, this sample, on uh, these pads right here. So we're hitting play. And um, there we go. So it's a little quiet right now, so let's go back to Workbench. And uh, we'll turn off mute while sampling, so this can just be like a live performance. And now we can turn up our volume here. And that's the global volume for these four banks on each side here. And in our fancy controls, we also have a loop volume. So just for this single bank, there's its own volume. So when we go to this bank, you can see it, it went back down. This has its own controls. Has, uh, you know, they're separate. So it's pretty nice. So you can uh, kind of really adjust, make a lot of adjustments and, and have, you know, some pretty, pretty unique settings across the board there. So let's keep adding to our beat here. Let's, whoops, we want to overdub. And uh, it does mute the, the overdub ones, but we'll add a snare. Let's get some hats going. Uh, let's do the close tap. And we'll add the half open one here. So yeah, so now we got a, a real simple beat going on. We can go back to our mute and copy and um, kind of space out our kicks and see what we like. You know, uh, I'm sorry. You know, and uh, kind of have fun that way. And then now that we are in our, our setting, our fancy controls here, let's take a look at this. We have our flavor, which is our, our resonance to our high pass filter here. I'm sorry, our low pass filter. So, um, you know, without that, there's a little less bite to it, you know, and with that, it kind of gets, uh, you know, a bit of flavor. So yeah, so the, that's definitely a handy little cool function there, our low pass. We have a scale setting here, so we can adjust the pitch. So that's at a, at a full octave above, you know, it's a full octave lower, and uh, we can set it chromatically right now in between. We have an envelope setting, so we can make these short little hits here, add more uh, uh, decay to it there, add a higher release. There's our attack, slower attack. We'll do that a bit more with something a little bit more melodic here. So let's kind of, uh, now that we've kind of shown you our, our first fancy controls there, uh, also within our scale setting, we can adjust the individual steps, which is really handy. So, you know, if this is a, it looks like a C keyboard here. So, you know, like a minor, what is the minor there? I think that's a C minor scale. So in any case, we could just like jump within our scale here to the, the steps of whatever minor scale we want, you know, whatever scale you want and whatever steps of the scale you want. So that's really handy. So it's good if you're just kind of kind of working on like a live performance sort of setting to use that. And that way you make sure that you jump to nice clean tones that aren't, uh, you know, major jumps. But let's uh, let's go back to our sample here and let's add in another instrument. Let's load up our our square synth or something here. Okay. So let's uh So now you can kind of see that's going there. Let's uh add in some more sounds here. And yeah, and so now we can uh we can copy this over to our second bank there. 
and we can chain this together to get a nice 32 step sequence going of the same thing. And let's adjust our global setting there. And uh, now all of our parameter changes will affect, affect all of that. So let's, uh, let's give it a shorter uh, decay time there. Let's change our scale. Well, let's change our scale just on one of them. So let's go back to the, the little three by three grid there. And let's change the scale on our second bank to five higher here. And now we can turn back on our global settings, um, you know, adjust our low pass filter. And kind of kind of really get, you know, a sequence going that way. And we could, you know, spread these all across, you know, all four banks here, all eight banks if you if you so wanted, and really get some some nice long sequences out of a single pass through, you know, out of out of adding one sample, you can get some some really cool stuff, especially when you use mute and copy. So we also have more fancy controls here. So um, we can go to our levels here, and this is individual volumes. So you can hear that first one's really loud. We can uh, double tap to get it right back to the middle there. And we can lower it. We also have, uh, it's not a fancy control, I guess, but we also have a first and last sequencer here. So we can shorten this up at, as we like, make this, you know, in seven, seven, four time if we want, you know, and um, yeah, so you can really kind of play with your sequences that way and get get some really cool cool stuff happening in other time signatures. So uh, you know we have our levels, so we did our volume there. We have our filter, which we can apply to each individual step if we want. Let's add more decay there. Yeah, so you can hear there. Our filter, you know, isn't applied to this one, and it kind of has that, that sort of tone happen there. Let's turn these back down. Sometimes the, you know, just like any of these these things, knobs can be uh, a pain in the butt. But in any case, uh, we have our decay settings here, so we can apply the envelope functions to, to just individual hits. echo which we can apply um, that is you know available up here to us so we can apply this to just a single hit and this is synced to to three steps here we can also apply this globally so now this is on all of our steps there we can you know do this one through 16 here so you can hear this is a you know a different different type of tone to it or you know a different echo. This is for two beats, two steps. Kind of gives you some cool like tape tape echo sounds there. You know we can uh, make our echo really long there, and also we can turn off our sync, and now we can uh, adjust the milliseconds manually. You know all the way up to nine 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 ninety nine. You know, we have mix and uh, feedback controls. So now we kind of got a lot of echo going there. Maybe we can get a little more slap echo kind of sound. I don't know. Yeah, so we can double tap on our echo there to reset it. Uh, we also have, let's, uh, oops. Turn those down there. And we also have pitch controls. So on our 32 step little sequence that we got going here by chaining these, we can apply individual uh, pitch changes to to each note, which especially when you're working with just like a single, you know, rhythmic sample like that, you can get some really cool, cool little chains going just off of a you know a single tone. You know, so yeah, uh, there's also a pan function. I think I'm actually recording in in mono right now, so uh, pan's not gonna kind of work in my example, but. Uh, so those are our fancy controls that you can apply, um, you know, to the individual notes there. And then we also have, you know, fancy controls up top here that you can apply globally or via the loops there. So, yeah, so uh, there is this area up here is, you know, we've already covered sampling. We also have our importer. 
So this allows us to have something that we can sample from just right inside of the app. So when we go to open file, we can see this is the export that we created earlier. And because we went to iTunes file sharing, it's saved in here. So we could open that up and we can see just like a little waveform of it and hit play. And that's, uh, you know, my little woo hand claps that we had going on earlier. We can loop that inside of there. We could add the echo to it. Um, and we can also, there's a zoom function for it. We can kind of move around within the sample and uh, adjust the length to it there. So when we hit this button, the sample, the importer is the input. So now when we go to our sample setting, this is our, our input there. So you can hear it, it's, uh, it's been added right there. You know, I'm not sure if you could, could quite hear that, but that's essentially how you can import uh, or sample rather right from the importer. Also in the importer, when we X out, uh, close this file, yes. We can paste in audio from audio copy. So, you know, just, uh, I think this is a, a clavinet sound from our Patreon sound pack that Doug made. Um, if you're not uh, uh, if you're not familiar with our Patreon program, please check it out, patreoncom slash the sound test room. Um, you know it really helps us out. Uh, you know the website is is a lot of fun, but it's you know it's a full time job for both of us. And um, and yeah, and so Doug's created you know a fun little sample pack. We're gonna have app giveaways for you guys. I think um, you know fun stuff like that. So you know please sign up for that and um, you know support us however you can. We really appreciate any any donation. So now that that little commercial is out of the way, uh, that's how we can audio paste in. We have another engine here to turn on our background audio so that when we uh, you know, minimize this, it still plays. We also have MIDI notes, uh, MIDI slave, and WIST. And um, the WIST function you know, is Korg's uh, functionality in order to sync with another device. So when we hit that, it looks for another iPad to use, you know, um, another app running WIST at the same time. Uh, the slave is how you can make that the slave versus uh, master in that in that setting, um, in any in any MIDI setting. And our MIDI notes here is so that we can use this with another sequencer. So now that we've built up a little uh, beat over here, actually let's get rid of the beat and let's just kind of paste this one over on top of it and uh, and move these there. And now we have a nice little 32 step sequence. We'll even turn down this one and we're just concerned with our A side right now. But with our MIDI notes function. When we turn on background audio, we can use something like, we'll even get this out of audio bus. We can use our MIDI sequencer app to sequence uh, the, the samples that we have going on in Workbench. So it doesn't show up within the ins and outs screen here, uh, but it's there. It's running on channel one. Workbench only, I've only gotten it to work on channel one. So when we hit play here and lower this, it's reading the MIDI notes and it's playing the corresponding sample. So right now I'm gonna set these all to C2. This is C2, you know, in, in MIDI sequencer um, in, within this app. So now when I wanna sequence this in MIDI sequencer, if I just wanna jump between these two notes, you know, we have C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So the, let's move it to E there, and this will be playing that note. So you can hear it right there. So if we wanted to, we can sequence this with another app and um, you know, the, the notes correspond to zero to 127 inside of here. So this is how it's kind of reading the MIDI notes. And that's exactly what MIDI sequencer is doing, but it's, it's helpful enough to label it in the, the C, you know, the, the note names there. So yeah, so you can uh, you know run this with an outside sequencer once you already have this going, and you know manipulate your samples in different ways if you want to apply the filter to to this one and and really kind of kind of experiment that way. So yeah, we have a, a tap tap tempo, and you know this moves at lightning speed, which is kind of nice and kind of a pain in the butt at the same time. But uh, you know, yeah, it has the nice plus and minuses there. We can add a swing setting. You know, that's kind of, you know, kind of fun there. Give you a, a nice human, humanized feel, especially if we had our beat still. But, uh, but yeah, so I think I've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to, to touch on. You know, this is a, just a really fun app. You know, it hasn't seen an update in a little while. Um, you know, it, it'd be great if, if there was one, but as it stands, it's, it's still one of my absolute favorites. So I thought it'd be fun to, 
to make a walkthrough for it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you know, hit us up at thesoundtestroom.com. But, uh, but otherwise, we'll catch you guys next time, and I appreciate you watching. Take care.